Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Sunday morning. I believe it's August 13th, 2017, and I'm down here this morning going to do another part to the uh, May 2017 Estate Series. Kind of silly to still call it the May Estate Series now that we're into August, but easiest way to explain that this is all from this same honey hole that I've been going back to. I uh, was under the impression that I was pretty much not going to be going back there, that I had gotten everything I could get out of there, and uh, then I ended up getting a call actually from the individual, and he said that he had an item, had found an item that I hadn't seen that he felt uh, I would be interested in, um, and he said it was similar to the uh, one of the tables that I had bought, or I forgot how he described it, but I kind of got an idea of what he was talking about, so I figured I'd better go out and take a look. And I was looking for an excuse to go back there just to see whether or not I could, I could snag any of the other items that I was mildly interested in but didn't want to pay much for. By now you've probably seen the grinder. Um, I still haven't wired that grinder up and tested it yet, but um, that was one of the big items there that I had seen from day one and gone back trip after trip after trip and it was still sitting there because his original his original asking price on that grinder was like two thousand dollars or something crazy like that so uh, anyways let's uh, let's take a look at this table item and then while I was there I uh, did find a couple other items that I hadn't seen that I scored and I also scored a few items that um, I think I had seen but just kind of didn't pay much attention to and I just kind of wanted to bundle some stuff so let me uh, clear a little bit of room here on the workbench and we'll uh, take a look at this uh, table so this is the uh, item that he uh, he found and this is very similar to the XY big XY table that I had already bought from him it's also somewhat similar to that Hartford tilting table that I had bought so that's why he kind of got the idea that this would be something I'd be interested in and, he, and he's right um, not overly interested in it but it's a handy thing to have I think um, it's an excellent shape okay uh, the jibs need to be tightened up but uh, it was covered in like a coating or a film of grease so unlike some of the other items that had succumbed to the uh, the elements down there and gotten some surface rust on it. This is actually very clean and uh, it's got nice large handles. Um, it's got down here in the slots it's got the uh, the red paint that you tend to see on all the import stuff and this is in fact an import. Um, so what this is kind of like is it's, it's kind of like having an XY table um, but you've got a swivel component to it so there's actually a uh, graduations down here so you can you can swivel this once this is mounted you can then swivel this top to how many degrees you want and then still have uh, the ability to move it in this axis so let me turn this around and I'll show you who makes this we'll talk about that briefly all right so there's a little plate right here and it clearly says Apex, A-P-E-X, registered trademark. Uh, this uh, place for size, which is blank. And then over here it says code 707. And it turns out that's the model number. So this is an Apex 707 uh, table. And uh, I had never heard of this company. And I didn't bother looking it up while I was there or anything. Because I only paid... I think we ended up bundling this together and it ended up coming out that I only paid like 25 or 30 bucks for this thing. I, you know, didn't show much interest in it, quite frankly, when I got there because I just now I've got several of these kind of tables. I'm going to have to weed through at some point and figure out which ones are going to actually find homes on drill presses or things like that and or, on the, or which ones are going to be more practical for the milling machine and then which ones can just, uh, you know, go down the road. And then after I got home and I researched it, come to find out this is actually a company company in India. And uh, you can find these on some of the um, 
some of the like uh, wholesale uh, import, you know, some of those kind of websites that sell a lot of import machinist items. You can find this table uh, on those. I forgot how much this is new, but it's it's actually pretty pricey, even though it's an import. And I shudder to think what something uh, made like this, constructed in this way, um, would cost if it was made in the USA. I'm, I'm sure it would be probably, you know, $800 or, or more new. Um, you know, for my purposes here, this is going to suit me just fine. And like I said, somebody really greased the heck out of it. So that's actually nice. Uh, it's kept a lot of the uh, uh, rust out of there and probably helped some with wear. Although this table doesn't have a mark on it. There are no oopsie marks or anything on here. I, I actually am not even sure whether or not this saw much, much use at all. So that's going to be... That's probably going to be a nice addition to the shop. And for the money, I couldn't pass it up. So I was glad he called me. And uh, I think the other reason he called me was he was probably hoping that maybe he could get some more money out of me. And he did. So there was a bunch of items there. And uh, he had some audio equipment there. He had some power amplifiers and some uh, receivers and stuff like that. And it was kind of a mishmash of, of stuff. And amongst them... I spotted this little item right here, okay, and I recognize the name. This is ART, which stands for Applied Research and Technology, and uh, this is a company, I don't even know if they're still in business, but this is a company that made a lot of um, audio processing equipment for musicians. Um, I actually have a rack processor uh, made by this company back in the 90s uh, for my electric guitar. And um, I remember thinking, hey, I haven't used that in a while. I should probably, you know, consider selling it. But then when I saw how little they bring on eBay compared to what I paid for it back in the day, I just decided, you know, I'll just keep it for nostalgia, if nothing else. Or maybe at some point one of the kids will get into guitar playing. Although none of them seem to really be serious about trying to learn. But, you know, that's kids today. Some of them are just not into it. I, I blame the internet in part for that because I think the internet, it's a double-edged sword. It probably brought interest uh, to a lot of kids who see other kids playing electric guitar online and think, hey, I'd like to do that. But then there's also a lot of kids that are like, they see so many kids that can shred like crazy that it, when you're when you're first learning the guitar... It's very. It can be very discouraging because it's very difficult. It's it's a very slow start because of the fact that you've got a, the the manual dexterity that you're not used to doing, uh, the muscle memory and things like that that come into play um, can make it really difficult. Um, it's not like. Well, I mean, I don't want to try and compare it to another in instrument because th there's there's all different nuances to learning any instrument but uh you know i'm getting off the subject the hell with that okay so getting back to this so this is a art and this is a tube mp studio and what this is is this is a microphone preamplifier um uh, with a tube stage for tube preamplification of a uh, microphone so on the back it's got the standard xlr microphone plugs and then it's also got a quarter inch line input so i don't see why if you wanted to you could probably use this as a preamp for your guitar but i uh, don't really see much use in that i'm not even quite sure why you would want a tube preamp for your microphone other than this probably gives you a certain warmth to your um audio it, you could probably recreate some some mellowness um in the vocals with with uh, using a tube preamp uh, maybe more akin to something that was back in the day when everything was tube I don't know but I thought this might be something I have no idea if this works there was no power supply the AC power supply is missing um, so I added this to the pile and unfortunately 
after I got home and researched it, I found out that this actually is not that valuable after all. I think used, these bring about 25 bucks or so. Um, maybe, you know, for an extra clean 140. The situation here without the power supply, even if I get a power supply and it works, um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make a lot of money on this. So I might just keep this and play around with it myself. I don't know. But that's... That was one of the items I picked up that was non-machinist related. And then there was some other stuff left over from that, the laboratory stuff. So I had seen this several times and didn't bother with it because I knew he, he val you know, probably thought this was very valuable. And what happened is as more people came through and bought items and passed on items, he started to figure that they were worth less. And some of the things got passed on because nobody knew what they were. I didn't know what the heck this was. And we'll get to this for a, in a second. I just wanted to get to this wiring harness right here because he said this was part of all the same stuff. But then, so I just grabbed this and then I looked at it more closely and I realized this has nothing to do with this other item. This, so let's look at this wiring harness real quick. It's got these interesting, very strange, um, strangely made uh, clips on the end here. Okay, you get a better look at those. They've got a, they've got an elastic band on them, and they just kind of swivel. So, you got these, and then there's another one here that's very small. It's an alligator clip, actually, in there. And then on this end, these are all BNC connectors. And this is part of some sort of measuring device because this label actually says C less than 100 PF, which means capacitance is less than 100 picofarads. L is less than 100 micro H, which is inductance is less than 100 micro Henry's. R is greater than one M ohm, so one mega ohm. And frequency is greater than 10 kilohertz. And then on the back, it actually says important loss of accuracy may occur under the following conditions and then you can't read if there was something there it doesn't say it so oh okay this must be folded over maybe this is what they're saying is if any of these conditions occur in the circuit then you're gonna have a loss of accuracy so accuracy so this is some sort of uh, okay, these BNC connectors are labeled low sense, low drive, high sense, and high drive. So, anybody get any idea what this thing might be? I know that there's a lot of engineer types and and that, and even some uh, applied science guys that that uh, watch my channel occasionally. If you happen to tune in and see this, if you have any idea what this might be, to I'd just be curious because. If it's actually uh, usable to somebody, I'd hate to just can it. All right, so this next item also looks like it came out of a laboratory setting. Um, this is a Hewlett-Packard Model 456A AC current probe. And it's a good thing that it says that on it because otherwise I would have absolutely no idea what this was for. It's a pretty small box. Um, on the back it's got a serial number and then it says over here there's a sticker that says option number one which means that this might have been ordered with some sort of extra I don't know connection or something um, not quite sure it's got a couple of little tiny um, they're almost like banana jacks but they're tiny uh, it says battery test 7 volt minimum uh, there's a power switch, but there's no uh, power light to indicate that the unit's on. It works on 120 volt AC. So if I plug this in and turn it on, I wouldn't even know if it's working. Uh, it's clearly supposed to probably work with something else. I don't know what. I don't know if it's supposed to work with an oscilloscope or some other piece of test equipment. There are two jacks over here. Uh, these don't appear to unplug. They're wired in permanently. The output jack goes to this funky connector right here, which, oddly enough, when I first looked at it, I thought, hey, that almost looks like a European uh, AC 220 uh, uh, volt plug, but it's not. It's a couple of banana jacks, male jacks that are in a fixed position and covered 
protected by this plastic shield. Um, so one of these jacks goes to clearly goes to the uh, uh, the the wire for the output, and then the other jack goes to this screw with this little mark right here, which makes me think that that's actually supposed to be connected to earth ground maybe um, and it looks like they want you to ground ground the bejesus out of this thing because over here there's also a, a, a connector right here and this one also says earth ground and that's probably so you can try and minimize any stray current or whatever that would that would affect your uh, measurement and then the input goes to this funky probe right here um, there's actually a part number right on the probe 00456-62101 um, and on the end of the probe we've got just this this deal here a little hole which looks like maybe it's supposed to go around a wire so I'm not quite sure exactly how you use this and whether or not uh, well I can tell you this I probably have absolutely no use for it here so it's going to be an eBay item more than likely and unfortunately I don't think I can even test it because I have no idea what else is supposed to hook up to it I can tell you this that if this was uh, in good working condition it's actually a pretty expensive item and it actually still brings a few bucks today in the used market. My problem is I'm going to have to sell this completely untested as is, more than likely, which means that I don't I have no I have no reason to believe that this is going to bring big money. But this was certainly going to go in the trash because uh, it had been passed over several times and they're starting to get down to the nitty-gritty there. They're really cleaning out that place. Here's another little doohickey that I found laying around there and uh this is also something that I would uh, not have any idea as to what it was if it wasn't clearly labeled. But this is a Leviton, which is a major manufacturer of electrical components, um, outlets, switches, and everything for home. Uh, they must also have a commercial division. And they must have at some point, I don't know if they still do, but at some point they must have had some sort of a test, test equipment uh, division because this is... Uh, this is a model 51,000-SMC surge monitor counter. This is a surge monitor counter. Um, and what this, apparently what this does, I have no, um, there are no other connections on it, okay? All there is, is a plug to plug it in. So... What this is monitoring is apparently this is monitoring the line voltage. I think what you do is you would bring this into a place where you wanted to monitor if there was a problem with power surges, how often they were occurring, and you would plug the unit in, you would set it, and then you could basically take the key, which would stop anybody from being able to uh, reset it to zero because it must count how many power surges there are because it says counter, right? Maybe it's for in a factory or lab environment where you just didn't want somebody to mess around with the thing so that you know, when you came back and read it, you, you knew for a fact that nobody had touched it since then. Now, I guess they could just unplug it, but then, then the system probably would know when it was unplugged. So, let's just plug this in and see if it does anything. All right, so I just plugged it in, and it's going haywire. It's counting up. Counting up very high. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that thing's doing. So it appears to be set for low. If I put it to reset, okay, zero. So there's a low, mid, and high. So I put it on mid. And then high.
Yeah, so I have no idea how this how this is supposed to work. It appears to do something for what that's worth. So, if anybody out there has used one of these in the past and knows exactly what the whole deal is behind it, if you want to leave something in the comments, that's fine. All right. I'm going to stop this episode right here, and we're going to pick, it, uh, pick up the remainder of these items in the next episode.